Buenos dias. Hello and welcome. I'm Brian. I'm Michelle. And we are cruising with the Colmans. And we are in Santiago de Compostela, Spain. And we are getting ready to start the Camino Finisterra y Muxia. Yay! Okay, so let's say you walked to Santiago. Why would you? Wait, who does that? And now what? What do you do next? <laughs> you walk to Santiago, maybe the Camino Francis, maybe from any of the other Camino Portuguese. And you got here and you're like, I want to keep walking. Well, first of all, if you tour the cathedral, you'll walk a lot. But tomorrow morning, we are going to start our walk to Muxia and then walking on to Finisterre. And we're going to let you go along with us. Tomorrow morning, we walk out. But first, we have to start filling out our pilgrim credential. Now, if you walked the Camino Frances, you know all about collecting stamps. Yeah. And Muxia so, and Finisterre have their own credential. So the credential we got from Terra Nova Pilgrim House. You can also get it here at the Pilgrim office. This is our credential and we got our first stamp. It's different than the one you get on your Compostela. This one is the one and you could get it while you're getting a Compostela and get the same one. Doesn't matter. The point is we got our first stamp, which means we're going to have to get to work soon. Good morning. It's oh time to start gosh. walking. It's, it's a little late for us because when you're in Santiago and all your friends are here, you stay up a little later. A little later. Maybe Ooh. doing things like Kimada, that was tough. It was, uh, it was fun. Let's just say there may have been some uh, Advil consumed this morning already. We got, it's 52 degrees. Oh, it is, um, it's late July. It's uh, the, like the 17th of July. It's 52. If you are brand new and you have not watched us walk the Camino Francis, go back and check out those videos because we have had an epic summer. Our fifth Camino, yet our best Camino. Yeah. So much fun. And then we've also walked the Via Francigena. Have we walked this before though? Um, well, yes and no. Yeah. So we have walked to Finisterre, but we have not walked to Muxia. But the first two days of walking are the same route. So today we're heading to Negriera, which is 21.2 kilometers from the gate of the cathedral. It's hilly. So it's kind of like everyone's first day of a Camino. It's hilly. It's going to be hard, but it's going to be beautiful. All right. Vamos. Let's go. By the end of the road. Finding your way to Finisterre and Muxia is really no different from finding your way to Santiago. No, you gotta find your way first out of town. And, uh, and honestly, the best thing to do is have the Wise Pilgrim app. We cannot say enough about it. There is a, a fee for this app, but it is a million times worth it. It has saved us on the Camino Portugues. It's honestly saved us on the Camino Francis, and it's gonna get us to Muxia without getting lost. It gets us out of cities all the time. Cause I can't keep my mind off things I'd be better off to leave behind Gotta be careful not to get stuck And so I walk and I keep on walking walking for 10 kilometers with uh, several bars, cafes, but they've all been closed. So we've had no food yet. We finally got here to Ventosa and found 
some milk. So time for breakfast. We have just left our breakfast spot in Ventosa. It is 1130. And as we walk down this hill, straight toward that really big hill, we know we're about to spend three kilometers climbing it. Yay! Michelle says yay. I was thinking it? more boo. Did you believe it? Did you believe it? I feel it. You know what? That's the hill. <clears throat> it's one of a few that's standing between us and the ocean. Gold, man. I got gold. We came from over there. And now we're coming up here. 10% grade for two kilometers. If you haven't walked from St. Jean Pied de Port, you're going to get a taste of it right now. 10% grade. That might be intimidating to some. But for us, we did that day one. I, Michelle just says, hold my hat. <laughs> when you're walking uphill on a nice, smooth gravel road, and it suddenly turns into pavement or cobblestones, you know you're in big trouble. Meaning, the grade is going to get so intense that you're... <laughs> I can't even finish my sentence. I'd almost rather have stairs right now. It's intense. Whew. Last summer, if you watch our YouTube channel, we walked the Via Francigena. We walked from Switzerland to Rome last summer, summer of 2022. Hottest summer we've ever hiked in. Plus 90 degrees, long stages. The Via Francigena is not for the faint of heart, but it is gorgeous. The food is amazing. Watch the videos. But one of our big jokes along the way, every time we saw a bench, we'd ask each other, do you need a contemplation bench? Because sometimes when you're walking up these steep hills in Europe, you need to sit down and contemplate your life choices. But today I'm doing okay. I just need to fix my socks. Let's go. awesome <laughs> we have made it to the top of this hill and it's amazing because people always say how did the Camino change you and here's one way one way six weeks ago five weeks ago whenever we started to climb 300 meters over two and a half kilometers we would have stopped 20 times to catch our breath I mean that's a small portion of what we did on day one and we were beat down. We were tired. We were exhausted. We had to stop all the time. We just, we nailed that. We just walked two and a half kilometers, climbed 300 meters. 10% grade. 10% grade. And didn't stop to take any rest breaks because we were out of breath or because we were exhausted or anything else. Here's the thing. The only stop we made was that one little segment, the contemplation bench segment, so Michelle could uh, fix, fix her socks. She had a shoe malfunction. <laughs> but it's not about a brag moment, but you know, like I have a mantra that comes up on my phone every day. And today it said, I'm stronger today than I was yesterday. It's just a feel good moment. It's so, it feels so amazing when you can do something better than what you had done previously. And we just got to take a moment to crow about it. Kind of like <laughs> him, if you could hear him in the background. It's a good day to have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of the team. This is the Roman bridge, Ponte de Macchiera, and the story, the legend that comes along with it, is that St. James' funeral procession was crossing over this bridge, and there were Roman soldiers in pursuit of them. And as they crossed the bridge, God struck down the center of the bridge with a lightning bolt, keeping uh, St. James's body and his group on one side and the Roman soldiers on the other, and protected them. It was one of his uh, early miracles uh, after his martyrdom. So that although our experience this morning was that the first 10 kilometers was kind of remote because the two bars that were along the route were both closed today, 
signs said they were open, but they weren't. Um, 10 kilometers before we got breakfast. The second half of the walk, uh, the next 11 kilometers, frequent villages, about every kilometer to two kilometers, there was a village. Most of them had bars or some kind of a stop that you could make. Um, the rooster's still crowing. The rooster's following us, apparently. Apparently. Uh, so really today, overall, if those first two bars had been open, plenty of food and drink opportunities, restroom stops yeah. along the route. We are only about a kilometer from our accommodation for tonight. We're staying at Albergue San Jose. And one of the things you'll see in this series is that we're gonna show you our accommodations for better or worse, the inside, outside, all that good stuff. So stay tuned for that. Time, five, hours, 28 minutes, zero seconds. Total, distance, 21.0 zero. Kilometers. Google Maps tells us that we are 800 meters from our albergue, but there was a sign telling us to turn here and that we would only be 250 meters from our albergue. Now, it wouldn't be the first time an albergue misled you on their distance, but it'll be interesting to see which one is correct. Here in Albergue San Jose, we are on the fifth floor, which of course you might already realize means we're on the sixth floor. Fortunately, we have a lift, thank goodness. Come in this little doorway, and we have a private apartment today. So. Um, this is an Albergue and an apart they have apartments, so they have um, bunk rooms in the Albergue. They have um, private rooms with shared bathrooms in the Albergue. The private room with a shared bathroom is 35 euro. For 45 euro, you get all of this. So, so here's give you the grand our, tour. Here's our bedroom. We have towels and sheets and blankets and all that. And in the Albergue, you paid for um, sheets and towels if you needed them. Uh, the bathroom is kind of small, but the shower is decent close. Size shower. Yeah, it's a decent sized shower. It's the bathroom overall, which is fine by me. Uh, this behind you is um, a little balcony. And With then, laundry, place to hang your laundry. And then up here. But then we have another bedroom. So, so if one of us gets in trouble tonight. Yeah, so this is Brian's room tonight. <laughs> um, but it's nice. And, and a living room and a kitchenette. If we, if we cooked on the Camino, which you know, we don't. That's not gonna happen. We would be great. Um, but look at this, this is great. Walk your step, please. A little terrace out here with a view of Negriera. I will tell you, for 45 euro, we have never had this much space on the Camino. But I think that's part of the Camino Finisterra. Besides being in Muxia and in Finisterra, those are places that are gonna cost more, but along the way, it's much less expensive because there's fewer pilgrims and fewer accommodations. So, and you don't need reservations. There were plenty. She didn't even know what we wanted today. So, plenty of space. Hola, buenos dias. Hello and good morning. It is day two after leaving Santiago de Compostela on the way to Finisterre or Muxia. We don't know where we're going? We know where we're going, oh, but whew. so far the route is the same, no matter which place you're going to. <laughs> we are leaving the village of Negriera on the way to the village of Overioa. Nope. But we're not stopping at Noverioa. <laughs> it's one of the longest stages in the entire Camino in the Briarly Guidebook. It's 30 kilometers! Yeah, and we don't do 30 kilometers in if one day. If we can avoid it. We've gotten close, but... Yeah. So we're walking 21 kilometers to Santa Marina. Which I think that's far enough. 21 kilometers is funny far. There are also three options, or two options along today's path, and then one along tomorrow's. Now I will say that Briarly does give some options for stopping, and then this is the suggested end stage for Moon. So if you're following a guidebook, there are other suggestions. This is what we've decided. Hopefully it'll work out. It means basically that every day 
from Santiago to Mushia, we have 21 kilometers. So we've balanced it out evenly for us. Yeah. Well, it is about 62 degrees this morning, so it's a little chilly, but nice. Um, it's supposed to be very little chance of rain today. We have some fog rolling in, we'll say from the coast, although we're still pretty far from the coast. A half hour by taxi. <laughs> there are faster ways to get to Mushia. <laughs> anyway. Vamos. Let's go. I like hills. Oh good, because we got a really big one coming up. Yay! Yay! We have decided for this Camino to carry day packs and to ship one suitcase ahead every day from lodging to lodging. It's the first time in five Caminos that we have decided to do that. And let me tell you, <laughs> wow. Game changer. <laughs> we are so much more pleasant with each other, for one, at the end of the day, we just feel better, which is a miracle. The only disadvantage is having to lug that suitcase up a flight or two of stairs every night, but it's way better than lugging that heavy backpack up and over all these mountains we have every day. Yeah, it has not. Um, the luggage service has been great. It's been there most of the time before we get there. Sometimes we have to wait a half hour to an hour if we're there early. But I think the latest it's ever shown up is 3 p.m. There are multiple companies that take care of luggage service. And in most of the albergues, you'll see their tags and there's a little envelope. You fill out where you're going. You generally have to call them by 8 p.m. the night before to reserve your spot on the van. Um, you put the money in the envelope, attach it to your bag, and it shows up where you need it to show up. A lot of people use it just for like, I'm gonna use it today because I've got a really long day. and Or so, my knees are really hurting. Yeah, and so they use it occasionally. If you think that that's something you might do, make sure you have a proper um, pack for water because even those little packable backpacks that we would typically carry in our backpack, those can really start to irritate your shoulders um, over, the, over the time. So just kind of be thoughtful of that. So what services have we used? Well, we've used three different uh, companies because of certain restrictions that they have. Yeah, so in um, St. jean pierre de Port, we used Yakotrans to get us to uh, Roncesvalles. Because Correos does not operate in France. But why didn't we stick with Yakotrans since that's who we started with? It was more expensive, seven euro a day. But Correos will let you um, well, also, their website is not very user-friendly. The Yako Trans website. Yako Trans, I'm not very happy with your website overall. But um, Correos will let you pay one price from your start to Santiago. That may be Roncesvalles, where they begin their service. It may be Pamplona. It may be Soria. And it ends up being four euro a day. Approximately for us. Approximately, and that didn't matter. It didn't matter how many days it took us to get to Santiago. That was one price, I paid it in advance. And even if we didn't know our, what where we were staying, I could just type it in the night before, at 8 p, before 8 p.m. and um, write it on a luggage tag. And we made changes along the route. We changed a few of our accommodations and we just wrote the new accommodations in on the paper that we had. Yes. And we changed it on the website. Yes. Now, for the Camino Finisterra, we used a different service. Why? Couldn't get Correos to work for this service. So Correos does not operate beyond Santiago. I could be wrong on that. But for what we wanted to do, walking from Santiago to Mushia to Finisterra, I couldn't get that website to work very well for me. And I haven't seen Correos at any of the lodging spots. I see Yakotrans and the one that we used, which, which is, is Camino Facile, as in facilitate. Yes, they were really great because their website doesn't even allow you to go from Mushia to Finisterra because everyone goes 
Finisterra to Mushia. Most. And, well, at least, yeah, enough that it's not on their <laughs> website. All I did was I filled out the first four stages to get to Mushia, and then I sent them an email and said, hey, I don't see this. We're going from Mushia to Finisterra. Here's where we're staying. And they said, no problem. And they just added it to our price. And we added an extra little payment to cover it. And there you go. Seven euro a day. Man, it's nice. Now, seven euro a day and the four euro a day for Correos is definitely a budget item that you do not want to um, have without planning for it because that adds up over a month and a half. Yeah, I would definitely take into account having that expense. So think about it, plan ahead, and uh, make your best your financial walk. decisions so that you can enjoy your walk. Enjoy your walk. Camino pro tip, whenever you're walking on the road, always do it walking into traffic, unless you're on a blind corner and it's not safe. But it's much better to walk into traffic than it is to walk with traffic. The bikes should be traveling on the right side of the road with the traffic. Of course, whenever a sidewalk or shoulder appears, you should be walking on that if possible. We have arrived. Casa Peppa is right there. That's the bar restaurant. And here's the Albergue. It's kind of attached to the church, which is interesting. And our room is right here around the corner. Okay, Brian, you need to go back and get the luggage, please. Oh, okay. I'll take care of this. When this guy's Let's go with her. All right, Brian's gotta head back and get the luggage. So I'm gonna show you the room. <sighs> Pretty simple, two beds, we've done some airflow. Oh, I think that might be the biggest, smallest TV we've had. In other words, we do not have one single big TV. That's all right, we never use it. Ooh. All right, let's see, what do we got next? In here, pretty basic. At least the water will stay in there. It's a nice size, look at all that kind of space. All right, that's it. And outside, it's corn, corn, corn. So we gotta shut the door, door, door. Because flies like to hang out in the corn.